Hello, my name is Emily Gravett and today, for today's Emily Draws, we are going to be drawing two characters from this book here. We are going to be drawing Cyril and Pat. And let's have a look, find out what we need. For today's drawing, you are going to need a pencil. And if you're going to use paints, you need some of those. So I like to use paints like these. These are watercolours. Mine come in little tubes. Yours may come in solid blocks. It doesn't make any difference. And some paintbrushes or a paintbrush, whatever you've got, really, doesn't really matter. And also, when I'm drawing several and Pat, I like to use some of these things here. Wax crayons. Oh, and might be useful to have a rubber as well because you never know we might make a mistake or two and it doesn't matter so we're gonna start off let's draw Cyril so for Cyril I'm gonna start with his body and I feel like a lot of my characters really oh, hang on let's use a different pencil you can't really see that one that's better isn't it he's sort of an oblong might get a little bit wider at the bottom so two parallel lines and then the top one sort of curves around like this can you see i'm gonna move it up a bit and move the camera down a bit so it's a bit nearer the middle okay that all right like that so and then it sort of goes in another curve along the bottom that's going to be his body and his head is pretty much a sort of curvy triangle so to a point around there on his nose like that but rather than very straight sides you could actually give the triangle a bit of a curve so he looks a bit like that head body little ears he's a gray squirrel so we're doing quite small quite rounded ears if he was a red squirrel there'd be a lot more fluff on them so that doesn't look bad i'm going to rub out a little line in between now as before with all of my draw along videos use the pause button if you feel like i am going too fast because i practice drawing a lot so i probably draw quite a bit faster than some of you but that's okay it doesn't matter the pause button is perfectly fine so here's a squirrel we're going to do some little legs now i'm going to do a leg here and a leg here he's going to be standing so I'm going to draw. It's, like, it's almost like, can you see, it's like an L shape with a bit of a curve. And then another bit there. How's that going for you? Well done. And he's going to be kicking out his leg in front because I think he's going to be quite excited. So I'm going to do another one there that goes up at an angle, up that way. And there. Lovely. Now I'm going to rub out one of these lines, and the line I'm going to rub out is this little one here because that's his front leg. I'm going to leave that line there, or well, most of it. I might just rub a little bit. This is a really good tool. Has anyone ever seen these? These are like rubbers in a click pen, so they're very tiny little narrow rubbers, so I can just rub out tiny, tiny little bits. I, think I got it from an art shop. Okay, so look at, look at our squirrel now. He's looking pretty good. We're gonna have his arms stretching out this way. So, very much like some of the other characters I've taught you to draw, they're sort of just like triangles, really, that go nearly towards a point, but then he's got little hands. So, it depends how many fingers you wanna do. I'm gonna do five, one, two, three, four. Actually, I'm gonna do four. Doesn't really matter. And a little pad in the middle like that. Oh. And again, I'm gonna leave that line because that's the arm that's behind his chest. So you'll still see his chest. And then I'm going to do his other arm. One, two, three, four. Better give him the same amount of fingers on both hands. Or paws. And then I'm just going to rub out this little line here. Because that arm is in front of his chest, so you wouldn't see his chest through there. So there we have him. He's looking pretty good. We're going to give him an eye. Just below that ear, I think. Quite a big round eye looking that way 
and actually I'm going to make a sort of round nose and I'm going to use that rubber the one in the little weird pen <laughs> make it like that again maybe I'm going to do oh a happy thing and I'm just going to rub out that bit there too how are we going? we're going to do his tail his tail is going to come from right down here on the corner of his thumb and he's going to go just like that easy peasy that is Cyril now if I got room to draw I'm going to move him over a bit there we go and then I'm going to draw Pat on the other side I'm going to use a ruler just so I get them standing at the same level on the page faint line there you can always rub that out after it's just so his feet end up on the same place and then I'm going to start more or less from where the same height where his shoulders are and I'm going to do another sort of rectangle like that two parallel lines maybe going slightly in with another bit of a curve and another curved bottom like that how are we doing and they're pretty similar because do you know what squirrels and rats that is similar really so another sort of l-shaped foot he's got a long foot with little paws at the bottom little feet at the bottom and he's going to be standing more like that so i'm going to have one going this way as well this one because he's going to be standing a bit more forward facing so i might make that a little bit more curved and then maybe rub out that little line in the corner there okay what do you think Okay, so he's going to have a paw that's in front of his body. His paws are going to be sharper because he's got sharp claws, I think. I've got one there. And then his head is another triangle, but this time we're going to make it quite a bit longer than the squirrel's head. But this rat has a longer head around the end big long roundy drop nose big eyes and he's going to have the pupil in it looking towards him and run back that little line there and then his ears they're actually a bit bigger than a squirrel's ears one there and one there what do you think you're going to look a bit confused good way to do that is he's going to curl going to do a little curvy line that goes sort of from halfway down his chest up to near where his mouth is going to be and then you're going to do it back again like that and he's going to have a little sort of paw that turns around like that okay this is pretty good I think he's looking all right and then his tail is going to be a line you can make this wiggle any way you want and it's going to be a very thin parallel line all the way back and just where it crosses over if I want it to look like it's behind his leg I'm going to rub out the lines that are on his leg there you go I think it's time to put a bit of shading and colouring so I don't know if you remember if you've done any of my videos before you know that what I like to do is I like to have a spare bit of paper which I can't find now to check out the colours on and I like to start with a bit of shading and that can be a blue or a black that's really watered down so you just try a little bit and if it's not quite right water it down a bit more and then I'm going to do some shading let's start on Cyril I'm going to shade that back arm and the back leg because they're further away they might be in shadow just a bit around the eye and the, and the ear that's behind and a bit underneath his arm there make him look a bit round I'm going to do a bit at the bottom of his tummy there okay and then I'm going to move on to Pat and I'm going to just do the bit under his tummy like that and his back arm his ears 
like that. And I'm going to give them both a shadow to stand on. Do you remember how we talked about if you put a bit of shading underneath, it makes everything look a bit more solid and real, like they're really standing on something. Okay, so now we need some proper grey. And I found that you can water down a bit of black, but if you could got it, use a bit of white paint. Let me put this on here for you so you can see me mixing it up. A bit of white paint. I use a plate if you haven't got a palette, like an old tea plate. You can wash it up afterwards, so your parents might not mind. And a bit of black in it. You see, I've got quite a good grey there. And then I'm going to fill him in. I'm going to colour him in. Need a bit more water down. Might need to mix up a few little batches of grey because he's all grey. I'm going to leave his tummy white and do his back leg as well. There we go. His ears. And if you want, you see it's quite a hard line between his nose where the colour stops. If you just get a wet paintbrush that you've dipped in water and just scrub it over the where the line joins, you can make a softer, a softer looking line. Okay, he needs some more for his tail to do with a bigger brush, really. Otherwise, I'm going to be here all year. Let's find a bigger brush. Here's one. I've got a bigger brush. Ooh, that might be a bit too big. Let's try it out and find out. So mixing up the colour. Ooh, this one absorbs a lot of water, this brush. A bit of black. Make a nice grey. And then freaking the tail all the way down. You could do it in a bit darker. See how wet I've got it. If you've got thin paper, your paper might be starting to look a little bit wrinkled by now, but it'll dry out. It might dry out a little bit wrinkly. And then I'm going to move on to Pat. And I'm going to do Pat grey as well because he is a grey rat and Cyril is a grey squirrel. You could make your squirrel maybe a red squirrel. What kind of squirrels live where you are? In the UK, it used to be red squirrels, but now it's mostly grey squirrels. There's not many red squirrels about, in fact I've never ever seen one. There we go, so he's doing his arms and his leg. He's got a white tummy too. And do you remember what I was saying about blending the colour with a wet paintbrush? There we go. Now, what they both definitely need is pink nosies. So, how do you make pink? Start with some white. I don't have a very clean palette here. I have to apologise, I'm a very messy worker. And you can put a little bit of red into it. Or a little bit of pink if you've got pink. You see, I've got a very pale pink here. So this is going to make a very good nose. Very good pause just a touch on his feet as well maybe a touch around his lip see how it's starting to spread out a bit because the paper's so wet I don't mind that and then I'm going to do the same on old Pat here he gets a pink nose and he has pink ears as well because he's a well we know what he is after reading the story, don't we? If you don't know what he is, then you haven't read the story with me. So you could go back and look at my last video and then you could find out what kind of animal Pat is. Though of course, Cyril thinks he's... Oops, now that did spread out a bit too much. If something like that happens, you get a bit of tissue. I've got a flannel that I keep for these occasions. Dab it off a bit. He has pink feet as well. Has anyone got a pet rat here? I like rats. I had a pet rat. 
I had two pet rats. I had a pet rat when I was a child called Clementine, and then I had, my daughter had two pet rats called Button and Mr. Moo. And I dedicated one of the books that I wrote to Button and Mr. Moo, a book that I might read if this carries on for much longer. There we go. So, I do his pink tail, like this. And now we need to wait for the paint to dry a little bit because we need to put some crayon on. So let's see. Check it straight in there. there we go. Lovely. Okay, crayons. I use these crayons here. start with Cyril's tail and I'm going to give him lots of little lines all the way through his tail. It's going to make it look like fluffy fur with a grey crayon. You could use a black crayon if you haven't got a grey crayon or a felt tip pen. It doesn't really matter to be honest. And then I'm sort of going to colour over just roughly. You see how rough I'm doing it? Colour over and make some little furry edge bits all the way over where I've done the grey. I quite like this layering of different kinds of materials. It looks quite good, I think. There we go. And where it pokes out the side, it looks like his fur. It's got quite a bit of grey on there. And then we're going to do the same with this lovely scruffy creature here. I'm going to do, you see I'm doing shading in sort of diagonal lines. I'm doing them different directions on either side of him. I'm going to poke some of it out the side like that. Because this one is quite a tatty creature. It probably lives in all sorts of horrible places. Like in the drains, down the sewers. But I think he likes the park most of all. bit of different sorts of colours on him. I quite like to use a brown, a little bit of brown on Cyril's tail like this to make extra fluffy looking fluff. He's a grey squirrel but it's very rare when you look at something that they're all just one solid colour. So I'm going to put a little bit of that in there too around his eyes. And also, I think, possibly on Pat. He's quite a tatty sort of article, I think. I've even got pink crayon here. I might just put a few lines on his tail. And maybe around his eye too, around his nose. What do we think? How are yours looking? Are they looking better than mine? I bet they are. Maybe, what have I got here? Maybe in his tail, put some black as well. Lovely. I'm just gonna finish it off by using a pencil. I think I want to make the pupils in their eyes slightly bigger because they got a bit lost in the paint. And make some of the lines a bit firmer. And this, this one here, he definitely needs some whiskers and some really long eye whiskers because these sort of animals have eye whiskers as well. I don't know about squirrels, you know. They might. He's going to have eyebrows like that. You can do a lot of fun things with eyebrows. They're very expressive. There we go. Some extra bits of fur on the edge. I might make this whole line down here. Just sort of jaggedy. There we go. I'm drawing this very quick. When I draw pictures for my books, I 
tend to go a little bit slower and what I might do is I might do them a few times if I don't like the way the first one comes out then I'll do it again and again and again until I think it's right so don't worry if you do something and you think oh it's not that good because you've got to remember that when you see pictures in books the illustrator the person that's done those pictures has probably done them lots and lots and lots and lots of times and they've got sketchbooks and bits of paper with hundreds of drawings of those characters on them and that's what I do and there's not many illustrators that can just draw and the first thing they draw is the perfect one there's a few not many okay I think I have drawn Cyril and Pat and I think if everything's gone smoothly then you have too. So I would really really love to see your drawings. So if you want to show them to me either put them in my Facebook feed underneath this video or if you're on Instagram you can use the hashtags Emily Draws or the hashtag Cyril and Pat and I will have a look at them. Thank you very much. <laughs>